For those that are new here and those just catching up, this here is a Yamaha Pasola. It's from 1981. Its original engine was tired and no longer working. We are gonna take a newer style engine and do an engine swap on this bike. All right, so there's two videos before this. Click the link and that will catch you up to where we're up to today. But where we left off last episode was we built a jig to hold the engine onto the frame. We lined it all up everything is sitting where it needs to be but nothing is actually connected so we used this here laser which is shooting down the bike lining it all up everything is plumb everything is in place we built a frame here or a jig that holds the engine to the table we've built a jig or a frame that holds the frame to the table but together they are not joined. So all that said and done, I still have three things that I need to consider. Number one is that engine needs to look like it was put there in the factory by Yamaha themselves. Number two is engine mounts. I've got to design and make engine mounts that look like Yamaha designed them themselves. Number three is carburetor. I've got to design it so I've got enough room for a carburetor to work and function the way it should be, including an air filter or an air box. The biggest difference between the Yamaha Jog and this Yamaha Pasola behind me is the engine design themselves. So the Pasola has what we call a vertical engine. The piston goes up and down, similar to a Yamaha Zuma, whereas the Jog has a horizontal engine, so the piston goes forward and back. Now, Yamaha designed the frame around the engine and considering we've got two different types of engines, the frame is very different too. Now, this has been done before. There are other people that have done this and this is usually the way they've done it right behind me. All right, so this is how I've seen people do this before. They just get a bit of two inch steel, two inch steel, and they make a V down from the frame. This one supports the seat, this one supports the frame, and it goes to the hole in the engine. And I'm sure it works pretty well. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it at all. But to me, this looks like the backyard guy's done it. This does not look like the way Yamaha would do it themselves. You pull apart enough scooters, you pull out enough engines from these things, you start to notice a few little differences that the manufacturers do compared to something like this. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but the manufacturers use these things here. It's an engine mount, an engine hanger, an engine buffer. They got these little springs on them and they spring up on the frame or on a plate that goes across the frame. So my intention is if that's good enough for Honda and Yamaha, it's good enough for me too. So I plan on incorporating one of these into my design. So what I've got here is An engine mount or an engine buffer, an engine hanger, whatever you want to call it. Now it doesn't fit, I've only kind of got it sitting in there just for proof of concept at the moment while I design my engine mounts around this system. Alright, so here we are. This is my idea, this is my take on it. I try to make it look as much as I could like Yamaha did it themselves. And this is kind of how Yamaha do it in the Zuma, they do it in the Jog and they do it in a bunch of other bikes as well. Um, they build nice brackets, they do have a few holes in them, they roll the edges for strength, that kind of stuff, but that's kind of my idea. It incorporates something that Yamaha would do, their engine mounts, their bolts, everything should be just like Yamaha did it. So we'll pull this apart, we'll take this little engine mount out, we'll cut him in half, and we'll make him fit this motor. Given that the Yamaha Pasola is so narrow, much narrower than the 3KJ jog engine itself, I had to take half an inch off each side of the engine mount tubes. I needed to do this to keep the engine mounts themselves as narrow as possible in order to give me the best chance I can to get those fairings to fit without bulging. Welding it this way didn't work. This bracket needs to be 100% in alignment Otherwise it will twist itself apart, but I'll go more into that a little bit later. Now it's time to transfer my template onto the sheet metal. 
and since the Pasola frame is considerably narrower than the 3kj jog engine I had a sheet metal place put a mild bend into the steel that would allow it to angle out from the frame down to the engine. Strength is an obvious concern. To overcome this I rolled an edge by hammering it over right the way around. I used a thick piece of metal as a dolly to round that edge to increase that strength. When you couple this with the bend that was already in the steel, this is now an extremely strong piece of structure. Once I was happy with the shape of the plates, it was time to test fit them. Trial fit and trim, trial fit and trim over and over, slowly sneaking up on it until I was actually happy enough to test fit the fairings onto the bike. All right, guys, we've got the engine mounts in. It's looking pretty damn good. We're about 95 to 97% there. They're pretty much fully fabricated. We've just got them sitting in place to make sure all the panels are clearanced. Nothing's rubbing. There is a slight bit of rubbing that I need to fix, but I'm gonna show you guys now exactly what I was talking about way back in the first part of this video, where number one point was to make it look like factory Yamaha job. Okay, that's it. This part here is the engine mount, very minimal. Only the smallest amount of it is visible. I still need to trim this bolt. That will be trimmed back to the bare minimum. This here is the factory pre-bug Zuma engine mount, which I've cut and extended. Again, can't see much of that, that's all hidden. This was exactly what I was after. Now I still have a few clearance issues here. The panels aren't fitting 100%, they're very close. Um, they're not perfect anyway from factory, but I, I know I can get them closer than this. But yeah, this is, this is what we're looking at. Final adjustment, back over the dolly, smoothing out any little kinks, any imperfections, and these engine mounts are pretty much done. All right, so we're part the way through now. Engine mounts, this is what it looks like underneath. Very good, pretty much there. Still need to weld them up a little bit and add some bracing between the mounts inside the frame. I can't really do that yet until I start thinking about the shock absorber mount. So this is the original shock absorber mount. Now it's quite a far bit further than where I need to be. Obviously the cases are bigger and this case is moved a little bit further back to accommodate for the horizontal piston. So I need to move this back. Now I've put a mark on the frame. That won't work because you can see that angle there is way too acute. The shock just will not work at all. It will bind. So I need to go about there. Now that would work very well, it's about 45 degrees. So that's where I need to be. So we need to cut this mount off and then slide him back. Alrighty, so that's all tacked in, everything's looking sweet, the frame is all straight, everything is gun barrel. That's exactly what we want. Now it's time to move across to the engine mounts. Now I've welded up those little cuts that I had in them, so they're nice and strong. But before I weld them to the frame, the original Yamaha stuff uses these little square bolts. Well, they're square on the ends. And if we point down at the frame here, you can see where the square bolts go into the frame, into a square hole. Now my engine mounts have got a round hole and I'm trying to do it just like Yamaha did. So I've made these little washers where I've squared them off on the inside and they fit over our little square bolts, like so. Now they can't spin on the bolt now. So now I'm gonna take that guy off. I'm gonna weld these guys on and then hopefully we can bolt this into the engine mount, the actual hanger, line it all up and tack it all in.
And this is the result. Look at that. A square hole. Both washers tack welded to both sides. And look at that. A little square bolt goes straight through. Can't rotate. Just like factory. So now I'm gonna go trial fit it again and fingers crossed nothing moves. By the way, if you're wondering, to get to this process has taken days and days and days and days. Constant trial fitting, grinding, moving, adjusting, bit by bit, step by step. But let's trial fit it. And bingo, look at that. Absolutely perfectly in there. Frickin' nailed it. 